closer look at barrel again, still just a tropical storm. It's got 65 mile per hour winds, 75 mile per hour gusts. So the gusts are hurricane strength, just not those sustained winds. If we see more of this dust come in, that could impact our rain chances and make them a little bit lower. Either way, you've got dust and rain. You're going to need a car wash at the end of this coming week. We talked about over the past couple of days, you have to have the freezing surface temperatures in order for that rain falling to stick and become freezing rain. Otherwise, it's just patchy rains. You can see how it's kind of making this bowing structure kind of that almost U shape. It's bent. And that's because there's a lot of strong winds coming in through the back of it. So that's why this is getting worn. You know what that means? Unfortunately, I hate this graphic. It's gross, but we got to talk about it. The skeeters are going to come out heading into later this week. So we are out here at the Buck Days Carnival getting ready to go on this ride called the Sizzler. It is one of my favorites. And then heading into tomorrow evening, that is when the Buck Days woo, Rally Night Parade is going on. That would be in moderate flood stage, which is at 14 feet. It's already over that right around 14.6 feet. So it is going to go up by about another half foot. Things with a low albedo. I've got my crayons here for the perfect example. They're going to hold a lot more heat and your crayons are going to melt first. So don't melt. Wear some light colors to school. Another thing new to this art walk, these, the barricades, they are up and blocking the streets off. We've got road closed signs. Heading into later this week, we're going to start to pick up the rain chances. Even though we're getting warmer, the rain chances and the winds may make decorating outside a little bit tricky. Of course, we are expecting all types of tropical hazards such as wind, rain and surf. So the best thing that you can do at home is stay updated with us right here on Channel 3, not only here on air, but also online and on our app. You can see these two little areas, the little spin ups. That's what the weather service has been watching and what we are keeping our eyes on as well. The NWS does keep an open line of communication with city leaders as well as emergency management in the days leading up to as well as during an event. Usually they're just EF1, EF0 and again they're found in those outer rain bands like these little red dots right here and that is what we are getting right now. And all of that warm and humid air that we have right now, it's got to go somewhere. So it's going to go up and over this dome of cooler air behind the cold front and when that happens all of the moisture in that warm air has to condense out heading into tomorrow morning still a very sloppy mess on the radar so it is going to be a wet commute to work or school if you are planning on traveling up to north texas really anywhere north of austin you're going to need to be on the lookout for some severe weather heading into monday night from about corpus christi bay northward up to north of matagorda bay we're saying that is in our act stage now with those mandatory and voluntary evacuation orders being issued and see we have temperatures in the 70s right here at midnight. That is likely going to be our high temperature for the day. So if you're checking a weather app and you see a high of 70, just know that is going to be very early Monday morning. Every day this week going to challenge a record high temperature, so very hot weather and unfortunately it's only going to be getting hotter. Got a stair stepper for you on the muggy meter from Monday tomorrow comfortable then heading into Wednesday humid Thursday humid Friday. You guessed it. We're still humid. What do you say we go inside and take a look at some of these plates? Absolutely. Yeah, Absolutely. so they've got all different kinds of options, like you said. And you mentioned something about crab cakes too, yeah. right? We're not going to see much rain either. The sinking air, that means clouds can't go up and we can't have rain come back down. So that's roughly what this translates to is a big sad face for us here in the coastal bend. Speaking of cold, here is a look at feels like temperatures right now. It feels almost like we're freezing in Corpus Christi, but Beeville feels like they are in the teens. Where it enters the Gulf of Mexico is going to be a key factor and what happens to it later down the road. A really good look at these band type structures that are pulling in lots of tropical moisture over top the coastal bend. So we could see some pretty heavy rainfall amounts and any rain bands that kind of train over a specific area. Now heading into this weekend, lots of folks at the beach. Not all of them are going to be familiar with things like the beach flags and rip currents. So we thought, why not talk to the experts? I'm joined here by Joey Farah, one of the lifeguards here in Port Aransas. So 
it's going to be a potentially historic rainfall event in the southeast. We'll get to that here in just a second. Our weather has been very hot. We're currently sitting at 92 degrees here in Corpus Christi. We topped out at 95 this afternoon and further inland locations over into Webb County, LaSalle, McMullen, all of them, they are even hotter than we are right now. 80s right at the coast. Heading into the rest of this evening, we are going to get down into the middle and upper 70s for most of the coastal bend, partly cloudy skies and a little bit of fog and maybe a stray shower, but I do think most folks are going to be staying dry. Heading into tomorrow afternoon, like we mentioned, that sea breeze coming in, giving us an isolated shower chance. Otherwise, hot, sunny and humid. Very typical August weather here in the coastal bend. I've got us topping out at 96 with a feels like temperature up near 109. That is thanks to this big high pressure over us in the Four Corners region. As it expands to the east, it's going to do two things. First and foremost, it's going to make us increasingly hotter here. So I've got this little hot icon just getting bigger and bigger the hotter that we get. It's also going to nudge far enough to the east that the flow around this high pressure to our northwest and the flow around the Bermuda high pressure, they're kind of conflicting. You can see how they're going in opposite ways. So they're essentially kind of mitigating any steering flow for Debbie. So that is expected to make landfall as a category one hurricane. And you can see this is Monday morning into Tuesday. It's still hanging around in the southeast and we're getting hotter and hotter into the upper 90s to near 100 in Corpus Christi. Heading into Wednesday, Debbie is still not moved that far and even into Thursday afternoon, still hanging around when it made landfall Monday morning right here in the Big Bend of Florida. So this is going to be a prolific rainfall producer for the southeastern states, anywhere from 15, 20, possibly even more uh, inches of rain across that area. For us, this little strip of green, that's from those showers and thunderstorms that are currently ongoing. So you can imagine this going away. You can see just how dry in comparison we're going to be and how Hot compared to our friends over in the southeast. And with that, they do have a high flood risk. This is a as high as it can go, a 50% chance for flash flooding. Now, this goes for not only Monday, but Tuesday as well. And as a note, high risk days, they're not handed out very easily because they account for two out of five flooding deaths and four out of five flood related damages. So this is a pretty serious situation for our friends in the Florida Peninsula, but also heading up into Georgia, South Carolina and North Carolina. Debbie right now has winds of 65 miles per hour, but gusts up to hurricane strength, 75 miles per hour. You can see as we zoom in here a little bit, this kind of clearing right here, that could be the potential start of a clearing eye wall. So as soon as that consolidates and we get a clear eye wall, there's not really a lot stopping Debbie from rapidly intensifying because there's a lot of warm water here in the Gulf of Mexico. This is the warmest waters in the entire Atlantic, upper 80s to low 90 sea surface temperatures, but also very little wind shear. So here's the official forecast making landfall in the Big Bend of Florida. The National Hurricane Center has pretty much kind of gone back and forth in this area with their forecast cone, but it's been pretty consistent. They're expecting an 85 mile per hour category one hurricane with gusts up to 100 miles per hour to make landfall sometime on Monday morning. And again, it's moving very slow across the southeastern states, potentially back into the Atlantic, where if it goes far enough and stays long enough there, it could re intensify a little bit. They did bring their forecast down from yesterday, but again, you can see it's moving so slowly. This icon and this one right here, these two, that's 24 hours apart, just to give you an idea of how slowly moving this thing is. Now, we also did mention at the top of our weather segment, another area of interest expected to move into the Caribbean over the next couple of days and taking aim towards the Yucatan. This is something that we're going to watch, but not necessarily worry about just yet. We're going to keep you updated on it. 96 is our high temperature tomorrow with an isolated shower or storm as the sea breeze makes its way inland. You can see those afternoon high temperatures. They are going to be quite toasty heading into the rest of this week. Upper 90s in Corpus Christi with hundreds further inland.